Can you hear it, people? Can you smell it? The NHL season is only six weeks away, and the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast is in full gear, including today's episode with a unique look across the NHL, fantasy-wise. Thank you for being here. Let's get right into it. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The leaves, they are a-changing, the temperatures are dropping, and that means it's time to hit the ice, and it's time for the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast with Steel and Flip. Tuesday episode, we are back, people. Thank you so much for holding out over the past couple of days. We are almost back to five episodes a week in September, right around the corner. That means fantasy draft season is right around the corner. And oh my goodness, you can see it in Steel and I's faces. And if you're not on YouTube and subscribed, that's why you can't see him. You can tell that we are fired up. This is where we butter our bread. And on today's episode, we're doing more for you so you know how to dominate that draft. It's players to potentially avoid drafting too early. Some of the overrated fantasy names in the NHL, that's on tap for today because almost as important as getting lucky with selecting the right player is getting lucky with missing out on the wrong one. And on today's episode, we're going to try and show you exactly what you need to know on that front. And thank you for making us your first listen. Every single day, we see you and appreciate it. My man, my brother, my co-host, Steele, (laughs) let's kick this off because I really do think as much as it is important to know who to draft, you got to know when and you got to know some of those guys that you maybe want to avoid too early because you don't want to miss out on the right kind of talent. So why don't you hit me with your top five overrated fantasy studs starting at the five spot? Yeah, starting at number five, you know, this is a guy that I wouldn't even draft uh, on my fantasy team. This is a guy that you pretty much, you know, throughout the season, throughout the fantasy season, you pick up every once in a while on the last day of your of the week in your matchup because you're down by a point. Uh, and that's Alex Goligoski of the Minnesota Wild. He's, average, he's averaging uh, draft pick is around 170 right now, which is, you know, pretty much the fifth, fifth, uh, 15th or 16th round in fantasy leagues. Uh, he's 37 years old. Um, he recorded 30 points last year. He, I don't think it's going to get any better than that. He gets no power play or penalty kill time. Mm-hmm. He's a third pairing left defenseman for the for the Wild. His shots, blocks, and hits are all less than 95 uh, for last season. So all of those categories, no power play time, no penalty kill time. He's up there in age. He's going to be 38 years old by the time they hand the Stanley yeah. Cup next season. Uh, and I just don't think he's going to get a lot of that opportunity that he got last year because of the, uh, you know, some of the injuries that they dealt on the blue line. So for me, Alex Goligosky is you pick on the last day, uh, the last day of your matchup in the week, uh, because you're down by a point or two, and he's just happy, he just happens to be playing that night. Yeah, he still gets some peripheral apples, but I think he's also one of those guys that is more of a name these days. You know, and I mean yeah. a fantasy name, not an overall name in the NHL. <laughs> that some guys, some GMs might still get hung up on, still thinking that they have value. The only place that Alex Goligoski holds some true value still is in extreme deep formats, real keeper situations <laughs> with a lot of teams in the league where there's slim pickings on the back end and you're di- in dire straits for some of those peripheral assists. That's really only place I see some value there because these are some of those guys steal. And I'm looking at it this way for my list that maybe over the past couple of years still had some decent offensive numbers or some decent categorical, you know, benefits. But this year, I really just don't see it. There's one, one guy that I think Steele who had such a good season last year, that's just not going to repeat. And you got to watch where you take him is Chris Kreider. 52 goals for Chris Kreider last season. I understand that he's still playing in a really good top six with the New York Rangers. And that's why you have to understand with where we're looking at this list is, not saying he doesn't hold value, but he could burn you if you take him too high in your draft because he had 52 goals last year. Career previous high steal. We know it with this guy. He topped out at 28 goals twice before that 24 and lower and lower. All of a sudden, 52 goals, even if he has 30 goals next season, let's say. 
That's still a good year by his standards, but it's a huge regression, and you don't want to take him too high. That's the point I'm trying to make. He's number five on my overrated list. It's a good point to make because it's just very unlead that Chris Kreider is going to put up 52 goals again this season. So I like that he's on your list and you're highlighting him. Not to draft him too early, but again, another guy who's going to bring points to your team. The next guy on my list, uh, and I'm going uh, to the Buffalo Sabres, and that's Victor Olofsson. Uh, he's averaged mm. being drafted right now at 150 uh, at the 150 pick in the draft, at, which, which again is around the 13th uh, the 13th round in the fantasy draft. He actually had a career year last year, and I'm actually surprised yes. that he's not on or he's not being drafted on more fantasy teams because he's only on 13% of league teams right now that have drafted him in Yahoo leagues right now. Uh, I'm again, I'm surprised he's not on more teams. I would like to see him up to 50, even 60%. He had 49 points last year. I think a lot of people are, again, doubting him because he's on one of those, you know, low teams in the Buffalo Sabres. He's not playing with some uh, – he's not playing with uh, guys in the league right now. You know, he's playing with Jeff Skinner, who just, again, kind of revitalized his career last year. And then, mm. uh, you know, guy that you and I have talked about a lot in Tage Talk. And, you know, he is young, 24, 25 years old. He had a career year, 49 points. I just wrapped it. Uh, overall at 150 is a little bit too high. I, I can see him getting down to the 14th or 15th round, and I think that would be a perfect place to pick uh, pick Olofsson. Yeah, I think there's still, so like you said, still something intriguing about this player, but one of those guys that heading into the fantasy season, there this happens every year. P writers, prognosticators, YouTubers, they tend to get a lot of love going for a certain player, and it happens more and more. All, all, Olofsson this season seems to be one of those players who's getting a ton of love. Hey, the Buffalo Sabres took a step forward last year offensively. Yeah, We're not going to talk about that. We've done a lot of highlighting of the Alex Tuck, Peyton Krebs of the world <laughs> in the mix there now in Buffalo. But I'm with you here, Steele, because just because he's on a bunch of these sleeper lists – and he's on some fancy graphics that you're seeing on social media, don't mean that you overdraft him. And that's the message we're trying to get across here on today's episode is buyer beware. That's the real note here is make sure you know what you're doing and when you're doing it, especially with these names. I'm going to get to a few more after the break. And I hope that y'all are listening to these messages because they're important for your fantasy success. This message is even more important for your overall success it's never okay to drive stone. If you feel different, you drive different. If you drive high, you get a DUI. It's never okay to drive stoned. You put yourself and others in danger every single time. If you've been using marijuana in any form, do not get behind the wheel. If you feel different, you drive different. Drive high, get a DUI. Do you think it's okay to drive stoned? The truth is your reaction time slowed down when you're high. You not only put yourself in danger, but everyone around you. Stop kidding yourself. If you've been using marijuana in any form, do not be get behind the wheel. If you feel different, you drive different. Drive high, get a DUI. Thank you so much for making the Lockie Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Don't forget, we are free and available on all podcast platforms. And we are getting right back into the swing of things. Five episodes a week, 21 episodes a month. September is right around the corner from us. So let's get right back into it, Flip. Hockey's right around the corner too. And we're talking about some of the guys that are overrated right now who are getting mm. drafted way too high. Back a couple of rounds. Uh, and I'll throw it yeah. right back over to you. Uh, for Thank your, you. Your third, third player that you're, you're rated. Actually, I didn't get to ream off my fourth, so I'll do that very quickly. That's my bad. <laughs> Vitek Vanacek is another one of those guys headed into this season that seems to be getting a lot of attention as a fantasy option. I say again, buyer beware. This is a player that comes from the Washington Capitals with only 79 regular season games under his belt and only 40 wins in the NHL. I am going to also say, as much as I like the improvements on the New Jersey Devils, He's going to see even more shots in New Jersey and face higher danger chances more often than not in this system in New Jersey that we know allows a lot of goals. Be aware if you think Vanacek is an option that you should be looking at as a drafted goalie. I think I'm with Steele's approach. Maybe at the end of the week, if it's a favorable matchup, you add in Vanacek for a win or maybe a good night. 
But I'm saying be very aware of this guy who I'm seeing on certain lists far too high. He also still has to contend with Mackenzie Blackwood, who I would argue is a better goaltender when he's healthy. So I'm going to say he's not also going to get a full look in New Jersey. Number four on my list, Vitek Vanacek, who number one doesn't have a great track record. And number two is now playing on a team that's arguably defensively weaker as well. Be careful with how high you look at him if you're looking at drafting him at all. Uh, yeah, I, I completely agree with that. He's going to have you, to sir. battle it out with uh, McWood. And, 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 you know, that's actually a good way to transition into the next guy that I want to talk about. Boom. And that's a goalie as well. Spencer yes. Knight of the Florida Panthers. I think he's okay. way too high on this list. He's averaging. Uh, okay. Uh, he's getting drafted of 70, uh, the 74th or 75th spot right now, which is around uh, the seventh round in fantasy drafts. I just think he's way too high. And that's the sole purpose mm. of, Sir, of the way Sergey Bobrovsky played last year. As well as Sergey yeah. Sergey Bobrovsky is their starter right now. So, you know, the last year absolutely phenomenal in the regular season. We can talk about the, what he did in the playoffs, but I think that was a team, uh, a team thing that happened in, in the second round of the playoffs okay. last year. Bobrovsky's yeah. their starter right now. I, I have said multiple times that it seems like the Panthers organization is trying to push Bobrovsky out and get Spencer That's Knight in the crease. I think it's just Woon right now as well. He's getting mm. drafted before mm. goalies and players who are just way better than him. And I, you know, I was looking at Connor Hellebuck, Jack Campbell, Quick, Cam, Jordan Bennington. We're all getting drafted after Spencer Knight on Yahoo Fantasy no. list. Yeah, that's not so right. I was surprised. That's not right. I'm with you. I was surprised to see that very, very much. He started 28 games last year. His save edge was down. His goals against average was up. They were still good. But they were down and they were up. So, you know, I really think Spencer Knight yeah. is one of those guys that should drop down uh, drop down a couple of rounds, Yeesh. especially as a goalie. Yeah, I have to take a deep breath with that because there's a lot. Jack Campbell, just by <laughs> default this season, with how many games he's going to just win yes. in Edmonton, I'm not talking about his statistical categories or how he's going to play. But if you're talking about ranking wins and getting points for your fantasy team, right away, hold the phone on getting Spencer Knight ahead of Jack Campbell. That's a mistake, number one. And number two, if you're banking yes. on Sergei Bobrovsky to get injured, I guess that's the angle you're taking here by taking Spencer Knight so high. That's not a good way to draft your team banking on injuries. Also, not on one that as much as I know you and I have talked about the mileage on the body and Bobrovsky and his long-term yeah. track record. He is also making 10 plus million dollars a season. And if I'm the general manager in Florida, he's getting every single chance to remain the number one. So yeah. I, as much as I think Spencer Knight is right there on the doorstep for being a great goaltending option, uh, the names that you mentioned there, that's, let's not get carried away. Uh, like full stop. Second, another name I want to mention, number three on my list. This is the way I'm looking at it, Steele. Really great seasons from players that I just have never really done it before. And a, number three on my list is Brock Nelson. 37 goals in 72 games, I think, is much more of a flash in a pan than an indication of where this guy is going next season. Also, we know the shortcomings of the New York Islanders offense. And as much as we like the blue line and love Ilya Sororkin, we know where this team is going to struggle is to put the puck in the back of the net and peripheral fantasy value around him other than Matthew Barzal and maybe a bounce back Beauvillier. You have to be really careful with where you take a guy like Brock Nelson, who over the, his career has been a good 20 to 25 goal man. But 37 goals in 72 games, I think is much more of, like I said, a microcosm than a trend to follow. And look, the New York Islanders are going to struggle to score goals next season. That's just it. They missed out on Nas and they really needed yeah. that boost. They didn't get it, Steel. And I would be very wary of taking Brock Nelson too high. This is not a top five round player that if you look at some other guys, 60 plus points, 35 plus goals, they definitely are. Brock Nelson should not be near those rounds. Look, this is a defense mindset kind of team. And that's been clear for the last four or five that they are very defense orientated. And you know, because of that, their offense suffers. We have some great points there. We haven't even seen Matt Barzell the way he was just three seasons ago where he was putting up a ton of goals and, you know, just looks like it looked like a speedster out there. So great to highlight some of the New York Islanders forwards as well. Maybe to, to let slide just a little bit. The last guy I have on my list, so mine's more of a top four than a top five. And you and I have talked about him, all, you know, 
decently over the last. Um, and, and, and it was off of if he does get traded, and that's Jakub Chikrin of the Arizona mm. Coyotes, averaging uh, getting drafted mm. at 148th overall, which is around again the 13th, uh, 13th, right in the middle of the third, and. He's just one of those guys, like you have mentioned, uh, you know, for a couple of your guys on your list. He had one good season. He put up 41 points. 18 of those were goals in that season. So that's why he got a lot of praise, uh, you know, just two years ago. He hasn't played more mm-hmm. than 68 games in a season, though. He doesn't seem to be a very durable guy. So he's out of the lineup time in and time out again. He only had one power play power play point last year. And it's his- yeah. Shots were less than 67 in both. Cal- you know, you're just watching that. And again, that's why I say it all depends on he gets traded to a legitimate team that can be, you know, one of those Stanley Cup contending yeah. teams. It all depends sure. on that for me. So again, that's why he's the last guy on my list. I think he can be, You, this is a guy you can let slide down just a little bit. Uh, you know, maybe, yeah. Oh, yeah. maybe to the end of the 15th round. Hey, two things right away. Good stat dig on one power play point for Chikrin. That's a very interesting point. And when you bring it up, maybe it makes a little more sense why the Ottawa Senators have fully and reportedly balked at any kind of offer returned from the Arizona Coyotes for Chikrin. They are trying to pull way too much out of a guy who you're doing a great job of highlighting as an overrated fantasy asset for sure. He's also just, a, in general, hockey sense, overrated, I believe. So really good job for ha- adding him to your list. Going to chirp you for only having four, but that's okay. I'll hold it down. I have two more guys. We'll get there after the break. But I don't think you and I have mentioned, and it's not so much fantasy, but an, an impact for fantasy, of what this 5,000-seat arena is doing to this team. Yeah. I really think it's an embarrassment for the NHL, number one. They should not have allowed this to happen. It's a joke that they're playing. This is a yeah. professional league playing in a 5,000-seat stadium. I don't need to get down that take. We've heard it before. Well, I'm pretty what sure their do? farm team – I'm pretty sure their farm team has 13,000 seats. Like, that's more there you than go. double the – They're classic. Of course like, it's they do. brutal. Of course they do. So the whole thing is a bit of a joke. But what does that really do to the value of the players on this team? Your home games are now going to be in front of a bunch of drunk college students, potentially. Like, you don't get the same kind of fired up as going into Montreal on a Saturday night to play the Leafs with 20,000 people rocking. You're going on a Tuesday night. Anyway, some of those pieces in, in, in Arizona just take even more of a hit. You know, Clayton Keller and the rest of them, good luck this season. But, Steele, I have two more players, and I'll get to those right after the break. Yeah, and I think it's a good way to finish with what Phil Kessel said. You know, he's happy that he's playing for a team that actually wants to win. You know, highlights your point even more with the Arizona Coyotes. So, there you go. Phil Kessel as well. We didn't mention that before, but he is on the Vegas Golden Knights. uh, One year, one and a half million dollars. Thank you so much for making the Law Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first. Listen every single day. Don't forget, we are free and available on all podcast platforms, which also includes YouTube. So make sure you hit the subscribe, hit the follow button. Flip and I appreciate all the love and all the support out there. And thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode. And Flip, I'm going to throw it right back to you for your last two guys that are overrated and should be dropped down a couple of rounds. Appreciate that. Number one, a guy who has just dealt a very serious injury blow last season in TJ Oshie. A guy who I actually really love from a pure hockey sense. This guy's a stud. He's a shooter. He shows up in big situations. He's a, he's a shoot out extraordinaire and he's just a straight stud, but his injury last year was significant. Ovechkin is getting up there in age. They don't have Backstrom. The same chemistry, it just doesn't feel right. It really does feel like a Band-Aid situation going on. They bring in Connor Brown. You know I love me some Connor Brown. They're trying to make it work with Anthony Mantha. They bring in Dylan Strong. A lot of big question marks in Washington, which I think is why I've said a bunch of times, be careful with any piece in Washington this year that is not named John Carlson because I really don't know, and obviously Ovechkin, but I really yeah. don't know what they're going to get out of the rest of those pieces because other than Ovechkin and Carlson, I would be wary of taking any of those guys too high, including TJ Oshie, who's coming off only 44 regular season games. He was great in the post. You know, he's great in the clutch. He's great in the postseason. He scores big-time goals. 
but 11 goals and 14 assists for 25 points in 44 games last season. Yeah. He's getting up there in age. He will be 36 in December still. He's one of the guys that – a nice name, right? Flashy name. Don't take him too high, guys. A little bit overrated this year from a fantasy sense, but I do still love me TJ Oshie's game overall. And that's what happened. And that, and you know, those big time, especially for a guy like TJ Oshie, who is TJ Oshie, who has dealt with very significant injuries over the last just two seasons alone. Yeah. That's why we're highlighting these guys. Not that they shouldn't be drafted there, but when you take into account all of the other categories and all of the injuries yeah. they've dealt with the last couple seasons, you be you have to be very wary of taking them too early or even predicted at just because of that injury uh, injury history that they've had in the past. So I like mm -hmm. that you're highlighting a guy who's had those injuries and should be d dropped down a couple of rounds. Most definitely. Also, you know, you're banking on Anthony Manta, Dylan Strom, and other veterans in this lineup to eat the minutes. You know, Ovi and Kuznetsov, they're going to have to eat the minutes left behind by Backstrom's injury. And that puts more strain on a guy like Oshi to produce – that's not a good situation for this player heading into the season. So buyer beware with TJ Oshie. My last guy on the list deal, and I really do feel it is the most fitting that I finished with two Washington Capitals because everything I said holds true in the crease as well. Darcy Kemper is moving from the Stanley yeah. Cup champion Colorado Avalanche to the wash an aging core in Washington. And, you know, look, I am not a Washington Capitals expert. I am not going to sit here and pretend to know the pipeline in Washington. But I know this. Last year, they were not good enough. And this year, they're even worse. I think everyone can agree on that. So they're in yeah. trouble in a Metro division that, again, we don't need to talk about the quality there. But I would just say that Darcy Kemper and Charlie Lindgren as the combination this year is potentially worse than Vitek <laughs> Vanacek and Ilya Samsonov last year. That's an interesting argument because maybe I'm being too harsh on Darcy Kemper, a guy who was great in the second half last year. But that was the regular season, and that's playing behind Devin Tays, Kale McCarr, the best top line in the league, arguably, with Landeskog, Rantanen, and Nathan McKinnon. So, Steele, I think we can both agree that Darcy Kemper, and due to a thin goaltending market, thinner than ever in the fantasy realm, yeah. Darcy Kemper is a real issue for me on where you draft him, and I would like to hear your take on where the right round is to take a look at a guy who we also know has had some injury issues through his career. Yeah, you know, it, it does get very wary. I think he's in the middle of the pack there. There's obviously guys that take before him. Hellebuck, Tristan Jari, Vasilevsky, mm. Shesterkin, Sororkin, Campbell. Uh, you know, those are seven off of my head that I can think of right now. Uh, you know, UC Soros, Markstrom, Anderson. So there's a bunch of guys I'm taking before him. I'm obviously taking him before Spencer Knight, who is way too high on the list. I think Darcy yeah, Kemper is a guy go. you would take before Spencer Knight. But yeah, I think it really depends. I, I I think he's in that weird spot where it's like, do I choose him as my first goalie too early or do I wait and let him slide a little bit and mm -hmm. maybe pick, uh, pick him as my second goalie yeah. later? In the you know, I think because he is the starting goaltender for the Washington Capitals, he's going to get those starts how good yeah, team sure. they're still going to be fighting for a playoff spot you know right around the bubble, bubble there. team a bubble team bubble team very bubble team you and i talked about our rankings on the metropolitan uh episode a couple of weeks you know a week ago but yeah he's on that yeah, go check that out if you missed it weird... by the way all of our yeah, episodes go check up on it YouTube. Out. he's in that weird spot for me though that yep you know personally i wouldn't draft him there but you know i would say seventh eighth round uh, for, you know, a team that if you mm -hmm. haven't drafted your goalie yet, that's where I would draft him because, you know, he's still a starting goal. going to need those the wins, the save percentage, and the goals against average. Seventh or eighth round sounds right. That's where I was thinking off the top of my head. I kind of copped out and pushed it over to you. So nice job on handling that. <laughs> Look, he finished tied for third in wins last year in the NHL with 37. He ain't getting 37 wins this year. He's not getting 37 wins, and I'm seeing him in some top 10 lists. I don't think he's a top 10 goalie. I don't think he's a top 10 fantasy goalie either, and I would be very, very careful with how you deal with Darcy Kemper. And if you're looking at him, he should definitely be one of those guys that 
you slot back on your priority list in your top few rounds. But that's what we're here to do, people. We're here to highlight some of these spots that we think can really make or break your next couple of weeks in your draft preparations. That's what Steele and I are here to do. So we hope that we've been somewhat helpful over these last couple of weeks. And boy, am I fired up for hockey, Steele, because I'm ready for our mock drafts. I'm ready for some of our categorical positional breakdowns. Man, there's a lot coming up. And I'm excited to also start yeah. making some bets. <laughs> hey, all of that is coming next two weeks bets are six weeks away october mm. could not come sooner we just can't wait to watch hockey make all of our bets you know yes, our sir. bets of the night are going to be back mm -hmm. flip and i are going to be going head to head again overall with with your records the bet of the night records our side bets as well we're going to get a ton of action going this season so stay tuned thank you so much for making the fantasy hockey podcast your first little day but for your second listen Go check out the Ultimate Pro Football 2, an eight-episode extravaganza to get you ready for the NFL season. The local team experts of the Locked On Podcast Network, plus a betting angle from Lee Sterling of Locked On Bets, all combining into one Ultimate NFL Preview. Search for Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022 on your YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. It's free and available, just like this podcast right here. Thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Good luck with all your bets out there. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow.